coach, I guess, when, when did you finally make that decision? Has this been a season-long process? Has this been kind of something that kind of hit you towards the end of the year after the season? What, walk me through it. Uh, you know, coming back, um, I realized that there was a lot of work to do to reacclimate, especially after COVID. And so we dive in and we, we start to get a chance to do that. And, and you just, you, your mind goes straight to the task at hand. And what I, when I really started realizing uh, that that year away had opened my eyes to some things, you know, I, I started thinking about it, but I didn't allow myself to, to go there um, until it was late in the season. And it, it was an easy decision when it came down to being able to spend time, you know, doing things with the people that I need to do things with. I just don't have, it, have that in, in the profession of coaching basketball. So, you know, you spend a year in mm -hmm. Washington with your family, you get a taste of what it's like, it's, you know, in professions around sports where it's just nonstop and the, the next game is the next game. D does it kind of reset your brain when you're there for a time and, hey, this is nice, I get to wake up and I get to have breakfast with my family and, you know, we, we just get to sit around and talk and catch mm -hmm. up. How, how much does that kind of reset you? Well, it, it did probably more than normal because of COVID. It wasn't like uh, I was leaving uh, much, especially in Seattle. I think that if my parents were closer and it didn't take so long to go back and forth, it would be different. It, I spent two days out there this year. It, it's just not enough when time is short. So, uh, yeah, it's um, it, it did reset me. It, at the same time, I thought I was reset for another run. And when I realized that I probably had more work to do than I thought I had to do, I thought maybe I need to go ahead and let somebody else do that work. So there you go. The fact that somebody else is somebody you've known and trusted for a long time, mm -hmm. I know I asked you about it being a full circle moment for yeah. you and for her, mm -hmm. but just, you know, how proud are you of mm. the fact that it's it's her like it's it's nobody it's her the person you've trusted for so long well i found a, a picture in my desk drawer of the three freshmen the year i came in and she was one of them and it was stunning actually <laughs> to think about that because it seems like we that 25 years has gone extremely fast uh, i look at her and the way that she works every single day, the intelligence she has, the passion she has, um, the compassion she has, it, it was, became part of my everyday life. And so it makes me feel great to know that they got the best person, the best coach for the job here at Florida State who has the passion for it. And the full circle moment, the, the pride I probably will feel late, later, but right now I'm really concerned about you know, the, where is the, pro, the program's going? I feel great about the fact that it's Brooke. You know, people first. It's what you've always built mm. this program on. It's what Brooke echoed mm. on the podium today. Just to know that that is going to continue to be the motto and the mission of Florida State Women's mm. Basketball. Just uh, how excited does that make you feel? You know, I think that's the hardest part of walking away from coaching is you're walking away from people. People that have poured their life into a program, whether it be players, whether it be staff, and the fact that you are watching someone come in that values that the way that she does, it makes it so much easier for me to say, okay, I can step away now, let her be the, the one that drives and leads this program, and, and I can just be a Seminole fan. You know, you said it, you get to be a fan now. What's 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 that going to be like eventually? I know you said you don't want to maybe be there right away, but yeah. eventually you're going to roll into the Tucker Center and watch a women's game. You'll probably be able to sneak away, see Leonard and the fellas now, or yep. go see Lonnie, or yep. go see me. But what's, what's, what's that going to be like now? <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Like, I just, I think about it. I told Mike Norvell, I said, hey, I can be a full-time football fan now. Like, I, it was recruiting weekends. I hardly saw a football game. And it's just so nice to think about just enjoying this place that has given me so much and to enjoy the people that are here still. Uh, I'm really excited about that.
Coach, uh, are you going to stay in Tallahassee? Are you going to split time between here and Washington? What's yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be able to get out to see family much more. But I do have a nephew here who is graduating from law school at Florida State this year and will be taking on a job here in Tallahassee. So now I have family in both places, and that's really special. My niece is in Nashville. She'll be getting a job up there. So to be able to travel around and not have to worry about a recruiting schedule or not have to worry about a practice schedule, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I do have a lot more that I somehow want to do, and I don't know what that is yet, but I do know that having some time uh, will be very special.